<laughs> we got Lord here uh, in California. Looks like says uh, what to do with your old friends who are still Christians and wondering how to move forward with debating. Uh, thank you. I, you've been waiting on the line a long time. Um, how can we help? Yeah. Hey guys. Um, I watch the show all the time and um, I've been waiting for like a question, like a good question to ask you guys. I find myself still in contact with many of my Christian friends because I went to Christian private school and all that stuff. And um, I went to college and now I'm an atheist. So um, I, I find myself having the same kind of conversations with them using arguments and trying to find logic and reason. Um, and we always come back to, well, you can't prove there's not a God, so might as well believe sort of thing. And I wonder like, how to keep dealing with that. Well, I mean, there, there sounds like there's some confusion about where the burden of proof rests with people who are making claims about stuff. Well, yeah. And that's what I tell them too, you know, cause I understand all that. And it's frustrating for me, um, you know, trying to be friends with them or trying to, I guess, move on from being friends with them. And uh, we still have this like hill we need to climb. I get it. Like, they well, there's, don't want to meet me on the there's, an, there's an underlying issue uh, first, which is you need to decide how much it's worth to you to be having these conversations. Because sometimes for the sake of salvaging a relationship, if it, if, if, if the relationship is the first priority to you, then having conversations about, you know, deep philosophical stuff, questions about God and the universe and purpose, those can mess up a relationship uh, pretty quick uh, if you guys aren't seeing eye to eye. So you have to make the decision about, you know, whether you want to have those relationships. Um, I can tell you that there's been many relationships of mine where I've, I've really dug in with, you know, to talk to people about their, their God beliefs. Um, and in retrospect, I look at it and I go, I don't know if that was really necessary. You know, we're, our friendship could have been, you know, better if I hadn't done that. There's others where I look at it and I go, I'm absolutely glad I did that because the further we dug in on the God belief stuff, a bunch of stuff came bubbling up that let me know I didn't really want to be friends with this person anymore. So it's, I mean, there's, there's a lot of different ways that can go. Um, so that's, that's number one. Number two, um, when it comes to this whole burden of proof thing, um, I don't know. I, my mind went to, to the whole Russell's teapot thing, um, finding analogies that you may be able to use for them to demonstrate the silliness of the, well, you can't prove it's not true position. Yeah. I, so okay. on this, yeah. on this thing where if they say, you know, you can't prove it's not true, so why not believe? Well, how many other things are they willing to believe merely because they haven't been proven false and which ones, for example, I would just respond with, okay, I'm God. You haven't proven that's false. You may not be able to prove it's false. And if you're going to be intellectually consistent, then if you're, as long as you're going to believe in a God, you better believe that I'm God. Yeah. You can pick up some worshipers pretty quick doing that. Okay. Get a nice little cult going. <laughs> but um, uh, we're not advocating for that. Yeah. Uh, no, no. That's I'm, a disclaimer. <laughs> the, the point is to get them to say, Ooh, I don't want to believe your God. Maybe I yeah. shouldn't run around believing things that aren't falsifiable or haven't been falsified. I see. I see. Cause then like, cause then I'm wondering, so why isn't like everyone's, well, I guess you could say everyone's default position is atheism, but I, like, I wonder like, where do, where do all these like religions come from? You know, like, why don't they say, well, why do we, why do we believe in God instead of, well, let's wait till we find a God and then believe it. That's it's cultural, man. I mean, the question of how did religions develop over time? I mean, that's, that's more than we've got time for today. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a cultural thing because everybody's default position is non-belief. Um, you know, with respect to all those other religions and all the other claims out there that they don't accept, it's, it's, I'm going to believe that when there's evidence, but people do a really good job of compartmentalizing and having this little subset of beliefs that they'll believe without any evidence for various, frankly, bad reasons. Um, so I, I wanted to touch on one thing because in the question here from the call screener, it said how to move forward with debating. And I just want to say that, I don't think that debating should be your goal. I think that um, if if what you're looking to do is is change minds while maintaining positive relationships, I would look at stuff like what Anthony Magnabosco does um, with street epistemology and just learning how to ask questions and just let the burden of proof rest with them 
ask them questions that are going to make them think about whether or not their beliefs are justified and see what happens. Um, because it, when you take a, a sort of a adversarial debating posture, uh, that, that could be a pretty quick way to, to F up your, your friendships. And I'd also say that, you know, having, yeah. having some examples, uh, don't worry about the names of fallacies. Um, yeah, I did a little mini lecture earlier about appeals to authority, but it's not so much the names of the fallacies that matter. Ha have some things in your pocket so that when you recognize a particularly a, a specific fallacy, instead of saying, ooh, that's this, you know, you can say, okay, well then, in order for you to be intellectually consistent, you must then therefore believe that I'm God. Yeah. Or how many other things are you gonna believe? It, it can all be done by asking questions. You know, if somebody says, oh, well, the Bible says it's true. Oh, well, why should we accept the Bible? Oh, because it's the word of God. How do you know it's the word of God? Oh, because the Bible says so. And then now you get, well, that's kind of circular. If I wrote down now a list of things, circle. yeah. And I said, you know, uh, well, I, I would recommend looking up, um, Googling kissing Hank's ass. I I've read it before on the show. It's a great little thing and it's got 10 commandments in there. And it's a, it, it is a really excellent exercise in, in pointing out a number of different fallacies. Yeah. Okay. I'll take yeah. a look at that. Cool. Hopefully that helps. Yeah, thanks, guys. All right. Have a great rest of your day.